Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to take thank Mr. Erhan and his team for organizing this amazing event. I tried to visit all the booths. I see that everyone is so young, dynamic and energetic. I hope that it, they will make great, great contributions to our country and to the system. I'm the NGO executive of MUSIAT. Musiat has more than 13,000 members and represents more than 60,000 companies and is active in 160 places around the world. So we are an association of companies. We bring together business people. Our aim is developing business together, networking and we are mostly focused on Islamic finance and building Islamic finance systems. We built the blockchain desk three years ago uh, at the time of Saadullah Engin. Under his leadership, we've done amazing things. And when we started the blockchain technology, no one knew about that. There was a lack of awareness about blockchain when we started it. So I can say that we are now very experienced. Today, I'm going to be talking about the philosophy of this concept and not very much about the technical side of things, because I believe that all of you already know a lot about the technical side of these things. As far as I can see, one of the biggest problems is the fact that we weren't able to incorporate blockchain into our daily life. At the moment, the a group of people between 14 and 35 are willing to invest in this and they see it as like a marketplace they are trying to build a market they try to create a value but this is dangerous because this could easily sabotage the system for this reason we want to expand the areas where blockchain technologies are used and we want to work on the philosophy of this. So our colleagues who are working on the technological side of this should also think about the philosophical side of that aspect of that. I would like to draw a comparison to the food industry. Let's think about the development of food industry in the world. Until the First World War, there was no food industry, there was no concept such as the food industry. But in the World War, War, in order to solve the food problem of the soldiers in the First World War, they built the food industry. They thought about things that could be easy to cook, easy to eat. It should have been fast, it should have been durable. So that's how the food fast industry, the food industry came to be. In 1945, in actually in 1940s with the Second World War, this industry grew larger and after the war ended, the end users also became, got, were able to use this. For example, it's, uh, the industry was transformed into something that also catered to end users. Now, at the moment, it's a part of our daily lives. So there are products we have to use on a daily basis. Sometimes when we cannot get a hold of these things, we believe that it's a crisis. For example, when we get a, cannot get a hold of a biscuit or a tomato paste, it feels like a problem. So this is important for technology. 
If a technology doesn't turn into something that is so inevitable for people, it is doomed to fail. Blockchain technology is a structure that is pushed, forced by capitalism, and it's still there with the, with the encouragement by capitalism. NFT and coins are used to keep it alive, but but no one is able to control or audit anything about the functionality of the coins. So with respect to the regulations, the states are choosing to define them as digital assets. They are not providing any guarantees with regards to their values. They, uh, they acknowledge that they are digital assets, but they don't want to incorporate them into the traditional system. They don't want to see them as valuable things. Maybe they don't want to see it that way, because from a capitalist point of view, blockchain penetration maybe is not desired. So, So if you want to build a chain of value, if you want to create something valuable, and if you want to transfer this value to each other using this technology, we have to develop markets for that. At the moment, in addition to loyalty and reward systems, you know, there is the most important promise of blockchain system. Loyal, there are loyalty programs. So nothing is very, really defined. Buying and selling is a very popular activity. Tokens, NFTs, lots of different things. But the transfer between these things in between different platforms is not something that is that seems feasible today. For example, you cannot you cannot at the moment buy an NFT in a specific game and transfer it to another game. No one is talking about that, but I think by now it should have been possible. So. I was talking to a friend just now in Avionex boot. He is the owner of Avionex. We talked about the right of an acquired right of a user being transferred to another platform. We talked about it. We asked if that could be possible. And he mentioned a small marketing application, which could that um, could make it possible. But I think it should be more widespread if we want to, if if it's going to be popular. So when did this start? The usage in the financial dimension is very very good. It's very advanced in Turkey. Our tr I trust our banking system. Our I trust the way our banks use the technology. They are, we are very good at that. We, we are at a very good point. Our banks have amazing digital platforms. They have amazing infra infrastructure they are using. They have loyalty programs, reward, pro reward programs, and they are some of the best in the world. So our country is very good at that. So if you want to forecast what will happen in the future, we have to look at all of these things and what got us this far. When did this all start? This started in 1970s. This process started in 1970. In 1980, this destroyed an old technology and transformed into another technology. In 1990, there was another second change of system. And the last in the last five, six years, we are seeing the uh, coming arrival of a different system, uh, which is based on the blockchain infrastructure. So the finance system, the money system, needs globalization and it forces this. But the countries, they want to keep their borders, so they object to that. What we do is we are using this technology. Uh, 
and we are talking about these matters and how these can help us. But we still haven't seen, we are still yet to see a structure that says, yes, I built my own economy. Today, many companies that you see around, many startups that you see around will be destroyed because of that. The investors, the entrepreneurs must be ready for that. In the next two years, this will definitely happen. I can give an example. We are all individuals, we all have our needs, and we are working for our needs. We are working to meet our needs. Using digital platforms, we made socialization infinite, unlimited. We have LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. There are no borders anymore. You can access a person in the other part of the world with no boundaries, but we are forgetting something. The sub-communities sub have formed. There were communities, there were individuals, and now we have sub-communities. We have different groups. We have new groups, new sub-communities. Some of them are hidden, some of them are transparent. And with regards to blockchain, these companies the companies need to exchange value in between they need to start this because if they want to be a community they have to do this because only that way only by being a community they can survive otherwise they can be they can be accused of uh, swindling people cheating people and even if are, they are not accused of that they can just collapse their companies can just fail only because only because uh, others were accused of that and so there's something that upsets me a lot i've been working on technology for the 35 years in turkey the engineers i don't know it's because of the schools it's because of our culture i don't know why but the engineers they are very competitive they don't like to communicate this engineering community they don't want to build dialogues and because of that the companies they don't want to collaborate i talked about our association the more we come together the more we collaborate the more we build together, the bed more the stronger we will be. But if we don't do that, no matter how good technology we are using, no matter how magical it is, you won't be able to survive without collaboration or without the support of others. If you want to survive, you have to create your own economy. We have to learn how to exchange these valuables exchange trade these products all these important useful things thank you very much for listening to me thank you may god bless you